what it does is it creates unnecessary barriers on, on trade east-west. Uh, what, we, what we can do is fix that. It's not a big deal. Uh, we can fix it in such a way as to remove those bureaucratic barriers. OK, well, let's get a little reaction to that from studio. Um, Aoife Moore, to come to you first on this. It's not a big deal, says Boris. Um, it's removing the likes of unnecessary paperwork, he says, on, on checks um, between, you know, the, the UK uh, and, and the North. There's also the issue around trade disputes now not involving the European Court of Justice. It's all uh, a way of simplifying things uh, to please a number of people on this island. It's not pleasing uh, many people on this island, to be honest. I think everyone um, who's been following this would say today that they are disappointed, but they are not surprised in what's happened. There is a number of experts already saying that this will face legal challenges because this does break an international treaty. Also, we point out an international treaty that Boris Johnson himself negotiated and the British government um, passed through their houses. This is his oven ready deal, if uh, you remember back to that time. Um, we heard from Simon Coveney today, you know, the Minister for Foreign Affairs. He had very frank words uh, with Liz Trust this morning. I think the phone call only lasted 12 minutes. And there was a lot of briefing going along uh, in the Irish government today that they are deeply unhappy, that Brussels is deeply unhappy. And we had a statement this evening from Maurice Seksovich who said that they would be now going, at, uh, going forward with the legal challenge that they previously had put up against the British government and they will be doing that in the next few days. Louise, let's talk about the impact all of this is likely to have. Um, the British government saying that the action must not seriously impair interests of other states. Uh, clearly, uh, you would believe that's not the case. Look, what they're doing is utterly reckless. And, you know, to, to come out one day and say, this is this is big, this is going to fix everything, and then the next day, eh, it's not a big deal. It's incredibly destabilising. It's destabilising for workers. And we see today uh, that uh, ICTU have a statement out along with the, the British TUC, and they're at one in saying this is utterly reckless, it is bad for jobs, it is bad for business, it is bad for workers, and it is an appalling way to behave. Um, and I think, you know, there's... You know, there, there's plenty of issues that, that Neil and I will disagree on, but on this, uh, there is unanimity right across the, the Parliament and almost, bar a very small amount, right across this island that, you know, the protocol has to remain. The protocol was working. We could see that with businesses. It was having a, a positive impact. There's no need for what Johnson is doing. And if truth be told, what he's actually doing is he's play acting for the benefit of his own backbenchers. This is more about a Tory internal row. And we can't allow the North or indeed this island to become collateral damage in what is effectively an internal party scrap. Darren McCaffrey, is that what it's all about? An internal uh, party row there um, within British government and this is how it's all playing out? I'm not entirely sure that's a fair characterisation. That clearly has a part to play in it. You know, Boris Johnson is under awful lot of political pressure here in London, uh, clearly from many within the Conservative Party, particularly uh, Brexiteers, who have always wanted him to go further on the protocol. So, yes, that is part of the picture. But let's be honest about this as well. First of all, there is a recognition, I think, on most sides that the protocol to date has not worked as well as it should have done. The EU have actually compromised and changed several things to date. The British government simply want them to go further. And second of all, you know, there are quite a large section, the majority of the unionist population in Northern Ireland who don't like the protocol in its current form. They either want to change or scrapped. The whole point of Northern Irish politics is about consent. There's clearly not a basis for consent in the Northern Irish okay. Assembly or amongst Northern Irish politicians about all of this. All right. I saw today that the SDLP were claiming there's a majority of MLAs for the protocol, but there's not a majority on both sides. And so the British government's case about protecting the Good Friday Agreement is a big part of that, and there is a definite right. element of truth as well. Darren, I need to come back to the panel on that. Neil Richmond, this is about protecting the Good Friday Agreement. That's the view from Westminster that certainly Boris Johnson is, is trying to put out. It's no big deal, and this is a fix. That's yeah, absolute rubbish. It's nothing to do with the Good Friday Agreement. It's completely to do with internal po political machinations of a 
Conservative government that's in a lot of trouble. Is it about the leadership ambitions of Liz Truss or is it yet another distractionary tactic from a Prime Minister that has had a tired couple of weeks? At the end of the day, what Darren failed to say is there is a majority in the Assembly that backs this protocol. Every single business representative group in the North backs this protocol. There wasn't consensus when it came to Brexit in the first place in the North. So to hear the gov government in, U in London come out and say, well, no, this is about building consensus, they never saw consensus. It's okay. an absolute ridiculous idea to put it like that.